Hey, 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 what is up, guys? Today, we're going to cover arrays. And uh, pretty much the simple functionality of arrays and kind of some things you can do using this tool. Uh, but I'm not only going to cover that, I'm going to cover the different objects you can create out of an array and just basic cloning as well uh, before we use that tool. So you can see the differences and the ways to do things. So to start here, we got a teapot because teapots are just super sexy, super slick. And the, the, the most primitive way to clone an object is to simply right click and click clone. Um, you rarely kind of want to do things like that. I mean, if you're kind of creating on the fly, because then you click, click it, uh, you, you know, you click your object, you right click, click clone, then you move the object, and it's a little bit of a waste of time. So another, uh, another way to do it that's far more efficient is to simply click your object and then shift, click, drag. And now it's going to create that, and it's just a more intuitive way to do things. And you can do that also with the scale tool. You can do that with the uh, rotate tool. So very cool. I usually work in this fashion. I usually work intuitively. And um, so this is my go-to. Now let's quickly cover the, the three object types here. We have copies, instances, and references. Now copies are new independent master objects. And what that means is as I create, an, uh, as I create a copy, it's, it's its own object. It's completely independent of the, the master clone, essentially. So whatever I do to this, to this object, it does not follow suit with the original copy. So they're just completely new pieces of geometry. So that's covered very straightforward. Now let's go over to instances. What instances are, instances are forever clones of the master object. So when I make an instance, it is forever now linked to this original teapot until I break that link. So whatever I do here to this teapot, it's going to follow suit with the uh, with the master teapot here. And now if I were to create more instances, they're all going to follow suit. So I can whatever I do to one will happen to the other, and they all follow along the same path. So um, now breaking an instance, there's a couple ways to do it. What we can do is we can right click and we can go to convert either mesh poly patch. I always love edit editable poly. So when we right click that, you'll see now the modifier stack broke down. It lost its bold. So instances will always be bold. So whenever you see that text bolding up, you know it's linked to something. So having that collapse now, um, it's, it's completely, it's just like a copy. It's an independent object now. Um, another way to do that is to go to the modifier stack, right click and not collapse to, but collapse all. And it's going to clap collapse into an edible mesh. So now this is uh, as well is an independent object. So it is its own entity. So when I move this now it's it's not following that one, not following the instances and we're good to go. So very straightforward. Instances are very helpful. Now the last option here I don't use all that op uh, all that often. I don't really rely too much on references. But it's still, it's still a cool option to have. So when we create a reference, well, first off, references function the same as in instances, but allow unique modifiers on top of the master stack. So what that means is when we create a reference, you'll see that the text here is still bold, meaning that it's operating like an instance, but you're seeing this blue line above it. And what that indicates is whatever, stat, whatever modifiers we apply on top of that line are going to be independent for the reference, and it's not going to affect the master. However, the master will still affect the reference. So now if I'm up to apply, say, a symmetry and, um, you know, a spherify, you see, it, you see it affecting the reference. Now, when I take the reference and start applying modifiers on top of its stack, you're going to notice that um, you'll see this white line. The blue line turn, turns white once we add a modifier. And we now can... manipulate that and have it independent of the master and what's cool is that it's still linked to the master so if I manipulate this it's gonna function um, and affect the the reference now again I don't use references all that often I don't find myself needing uh, to use that too much but instances and copies <laughs> you, you know you of course do so uh, moving forward then we're kinda covering basic stuff so let's move on to the array tool now the array tool is very it's very handy handy option to have. Um, like I said, normally when I'm when I'm manipulating objects, you know, I, I still kind of do things, I still do things intuitively. So if I was to say like 
rotate an object around, um, you know, a, a center point or different things. I mean, usually still I will tr usually go the intuitive process when I'm trying to work fast and on the fly. But there's many options to where many times where you want to do things a lot more accurate. You know, things that's based based far more mathematically. So what we'll, let's do that. Let's just jump right in. So what we do is we go to tools and we go to array. And we follow array here. We have uh, the, the object type. So just what we covered, copies, instances, and references. And we'll see the total in the array number. And you'll see a 1D, a 2D, and a 3D. And we'll cover that first. So what 1D is, is it's going to bump that number down. It's going to create copies along uh, the bottom axis here. So whatever whatever axis we, we choose to do it. So we're going to hit preview. And right away, you're like, oh, man, we're not seeing anything. Well, we got to move it on an axis. So let's move it first off on the X. And we're moving it 20 on the X. So we're moving that, uh, that teapot 20 points. But you're also going to see a total effect here. Now, what that total is, is we can also go over and switch it. And say you had, you know, so say you were doing something even architecturally where you had X amount of posts moving along, you know, 50 feet. And, you know, instead of doing that intuitively and kind of moving and moving and moving object by object, that's so inefficient. Um, you want to jump and use something like the array tool. So you would know that you have something, say, moving at, you know, we'll say 500 units. And you know that you need, say, 10 objects moving along that 500 units boom we have it and we have it pitch perfect you know completely accurate so very good option now let's jump further and we'll use the 2d option so 2d creates on uh, on another plane here so if we move it on a, on the 2d axis here let's move it say on the y you're going to see now we're making rows of our row so we're copying 10 essentially we've got a 10 by 10 uh, army of teapots very straightforward. So let's cover 3D. And if you guessed it, we're just going to kind of, again, go on another level of that. So we kind of have this rectangle or cube of uh, teapots. <laughs> um, so when I use arrays, I don't usually use these, use these other options too often, um, especially 3D. But so I'm usually working in 1D when I'm doing things. But you can, I'm just showing you the options. Very handy when situations call for it. Um, so what's also very cool, and we canceled out of it, but if you want to commit, just hit OK. Another cool option are, are different things you can create using it. So sometimes, you know, you just have fun, you play around, and this might give you an idea of, you know, modeling something, making something. So say you, I mean, we're just using a box here, but say you had some kind of like cool, like cool looking piece of geometry, and you just want to duplicate it and maneuver it around, and some of the stuff would even be cool to render, you know. So let's say, you know, let's just do something like, I don't know. So let's say, yeah, we'll, we'll move 50 here on the on the on the one D, bust it down. Let's just kind of get it barely. Let's just get barely get it get it pushed out, getting it pushed out. We'll just do it on the X here. I just want like a two, just to kind of get like a domino effect here. And then what we can do is we can rotate this as well. So we can kind of start to rotate this. And you just get some cool effects going, get some spiral effects, and you can just create some very cool objects, you know. Um, other ways we could do that, we could take that off, and then all of a sudden we kind of have like a razor, like a saw blade, you know. And, and like I said, if you had something cooler than just a straight rectangle cube, um, you know, you could come up with some cool looking shapes. So it's just something to play around with, or, it, you know, it creates a base, and then you can model over that stuff cleanly. Um, but the Ray Tool is uh, it's very fun. Now let's do a very practical example. And we'll try and do this real quick, so I'm not taking up too much time. Let's create a cylinder. What we're going to do is let's, we're going to create a watch dial. So we're going to start here. Hit it with the gray material. And just real quick, model this out. The very base, anyway. Just kind of get something rolling here. All right, and there we go. Base of a watch. Now let's create some ticks. Get these uh, little watch ticks here. 
I'm just going to quickly align it. And I always use, you see me use a lot of hotkeys. And so, you know, real quick tip, when you're, when you're working and you find yourself using the same options and tools, so say you're using the extrude and the bevel and the chamfer a lot, man, make it a hotkey, write it down, and just get that burning in your brain. You know, there's always going to be a little bit of a struggle at first to kind of remember that stuff, but it eventually becomes muscle memory and your workflow improves dramatically. So I highly suggest that. It would be a good video for the future to kind of really expound on the uh, importance of that. But um, yeah, well, I just quickly aligned it. Line tools up here at the top. I'm going to go back in our top view. I'm just going to get it in place. Move that there. Cool. And let's go back to the array tool. So we're going to go into the array tool. And what we want is let's create this as minute ticks. So we're going to push ourselves to create uh, a whole bunch. So we need 60 minute ticks. We're going to go count 60. And we're going to want to rotate this in a 360 degree uh, fashion. So we're going to go and move over to the over to the total. Go to rotate. Let's preview this. And we'll just kind of, oh, actually, sorry, quick, let's step back. What we need to do is we need to move our pivot point right to the center of this object here. That's why we created the base of the watch. So we can move our pivot point. So now when we rotate this, it's rotating along that center right where we want it. So let's go back to the array tool. We have our count up to 60. Let's go to rotate. And we want to rotate that complete 360 and there we go and see and that's the accuracy of the array tool is I didn't have to I didn't have to intuitively kind of uh, you know let's just commit to that real quick but I didn't have to for another example I didn't have to intuitively kind of do the math so if I'm over here creating and I, I was kinda of like okay I need 60 ticks and well let me put on my angle snaps and I'm kinda of like okay I'll do the math and I got you know X amount of ticks, 60 ticks, and three, you know, and then you do the math, and you're trying to get it to work, and you're trying to, you know, instead, that's where the array tool is uh, powerful. You know, we can get in there, and we we know our number, we knew, knew 60, and we knew we needed to do a complete circle at 360 degrees, and it's perfectly aligned, perfectly accurate. So, there's a super practical way to do it, uh, to use the array, and 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 again, it's just another option at your fingertips, especially when you be when you want to be super accurate with your with the, what you're trying to get done, sorry. Um, so anyway, guys, that wraps it up. I hope that helped. And if these videos help, give me a like, give me a subscribe, support the channel. Let's keep uh, let's keep making videos together. Um, I'm just loving the aspect of community. It, it brings, for me, sharing stuff, it, it just adds value to it, you know? So you're not alone. And, I, I, you know, 3D artists, we're, we're, it's a lonely profession. So it's great to kind of just engage with one another, interact. Um, it's just so critical. So thanks for watching the video and let's keep hanging out in the future. All right. Take care guys.